Hello everyone. Let's start our today's discussion. I hope you all remember that in previous class we had discussion on saving income topic in basic income tax calculation chapter. In our today's class we will be moving forward and we will be having discussion on topics of qualifying loan interest expense and planning of personal allowance. But before going in detail of our today's class, let's take a quick review of what we have already discussed in this chapter. We started our discussion in basic income tax calculation chapter with the format of basic income tax return. We discussed that how we have to classify the income between non-saving, saving and dividend income head. Then we discussed rules relating to non-saving income head, the tax bands and its tax rates. Then we had discussion on the topic of real estate investment trust, dividend income and trust income. And then in the last class, we explored the head of saving income. That interest income earned by an individual during a tax year is classified in the head of saving income. Now the tax rates of saving income head are similar to non-saving income head. But the only difference is that in saving income head, you also get 0% tax balance. If you are a basic rate taxpayer, your 0% tax band is of 1,000 pounds. If you are a higher rate taxpayer, it is 500 pounds. And if you are an additional rate taxpayer, then you get a 0% tax band of 0 pounds. We applied all of these concepts in the practice questions, which we also did in the previous class. Then we discussed that in saving income, you also get a 0% tax band of 5,000 pounds. And that is available if saving income lies in first 5,000 pounds of the taxable income. And that can only happen when your non-saving income is less than 5,000 pounds. Because then only the saving income will get space in first 5,000 pounds of the taxable income. Then we discussed that interest income is taxed on receipt basis. We discussed that interest income from national saving certificates and individual saving account is an exempt source of interest income. In national saving certificate, there is no investment limit, but in individual saving account, the maximum investment limit is of 20,000 pounds. Interest income on excess investment will be subject to income tax. Then we discussed that interest income normally do not have any withholding tax. But if the interest income is being received from an unlisted company loan notes, then there will be 20% withholding tax on it. We discussed all of these rules in detail in the previous class, and then we did six practice questions in relation to it. So I hope that you all must have done revision of it. Now in our today's class, we are moving forward and we'll be discussing the concept of qualifying loan interest expense. Just listen to me carefully with patience and concentration and you will be able to understand it. See, if an individual takes a loan for a qualifying purpose, then interest expense of that loan is deductible from the total income. Now you must be thinking that what the qualifying purposes are. So we'll be discussing it just after some time once we start drafting it. So if an individual is taking a loan for a qualifying purpose, then interest expense of that loan is deductible from total income. Total income means all of the incomes, you add up all of the income and then you can claim the relief of it. Obviously we first offset the non-saving income but if the non-saving income is insufficient, you can then offset the saving and the dividend income also. We first offset non-saving income because it has the highest tax rate. The same concept which you use in the personal allowances also. Okay, so just listen to me as I draft the concept. If an individual, if an individual takes a loan for qualifying purpose, takes a loan for qualifying purpose, then interest expense on that loan is deductible, is deductible from total income, okay? The interest expense on that loan will be deductible from your total income. Now the question is that, sir, what are the qualifying purposes? Now qualifying purposes include, just listen to me carefully. Qualifying purposes include, number one, 
लोन टेकिंग लोन टेकिंग टू परचेज प्लांट एंड मशीनरी लोन टेकिंग टू परचेज प्लांट एंड मशीनरी फॉर अन इनकॉर्पोरेटेड बिजनेस ना अन इनकॉर्पोरेटेड बिजनेस मीन्स सोल ट्रेडर और पार्टनरशिप स्ट्रक्चर फॉर अन इनकॉर्पोरेटेड बिजनेस विच मीन्स सोल ट्रेडर और पार्टनरशिप स्ट्रक्चर ओके If you take a loan to purchase plant and machinery for unincorporated business, your sole trader or partnership business, that loan is considered as a qualifying, and its interest expense is deductible from your total income. Similarly, if we take a loan to purchase loan taken to purchase plant and machinery for employment purpose. just a second plant and machinery for employment purpose this loan will also be considered as a qualifying loan now you must be thinking that why someone will take a loan to purchase plant and machinery for employment because normally when we become an employee we get plant and machinery from an employer see it is not always sometimes for jobs there is a requirement that employee must have some laptop or some machinery or when you talk about technical staff there is a requirement that they should have certain tools so if a person takes a loan to purchase plant and machinery and he is purchasing those plant and machinery because they are required for his employment for his job then the tax department says that okay we will consider that loan as a qualifying purpose loan and the interest expense of that loan will be deductible from your total income okay similarly if an individual takes a loan to invest in close companies now you must be thinking that what is a close company see we will study the concept of close companies in corporation tax but close company if i just tell you briefly close company is a company which is controlled by friends and family normally there is a requirement that it should be controlled by five or fewer shareholders so loan taken to invest in close companies which is your family companies the friends and family structure when we say that the company is controlled by fewer shareholders so if you are taking a loan to invest in those companies close company do not mean one which is closed like which has been dissolved it do not mean like that close company means which is controlled by friends and family structure and which is controlled by five or fewer shareholders we'll be discussing the concept of close company in detail in corporation tax for now you can understand it like that that your family company structure if you are investing in that so that loan is also considered as a qualifying loan similarly if you have taken a loan to invest in cooperative societies see when you talk about cooperative societies these are the bodies which work for the benefit of their members you can find cooperative societies in case of a society like for example the residents of a particular area may create a cooperative society which can run certain parks or clubs in that particular area you can find cooperative societies of employees also that works for the benefit of their members in that case those will be the employees of that society so if we have taken to invest a loan to invest in a cooperative society or we have taken a loan to invest in a close company a friends and family structure so these are considered as the qualifying purpose loans and the lastly loan taken to pay inheritance tax now just listen to me carefully i will repeat each and everything again also now what do you mean by loan taken to pay inheritance tax see as i told you in the trust head also in the trust income topic also that in united kingdom when an individual dies and when the assets are transferred from one generation to another there is 40% inheritance tax on it so just think about a situation that one of your family member dies and you are getting assets and you have to pay 40% ist on the value of the asset so from where will you get so much funds one option is that you have to sell those assets and then you have to pay ist other option is that you can take a loan and you can pay the inheritance tax so the tax department says that okay we will consider that loan as a qualifying purpose loan and the interest expense on that loan will be deductible from total income see 
if an individual is taking a loan and that loan is for qualifying purpose. Now, what are the qualifying purpose? There are five qualifying purposes. Loan taken to purchase plant and machinery for an incorporated business. Loan taken to purchase plant and machinery for your employment purpose. Or loan to invest in close company. Or loan taken to invest in a cooperative society which works for the benefit of the members. It is not like a normal company which is earning profit. Its objective is to aim for the benefit of the members, the non-cash benefits, the non-profit benefits like serving the society, for example, operating some gym or some park or like those activities. And even in those, those activities, they earn certain things, they reinvest. So loan taken to invest in cooperative societies, in your family companies, in your sole trader business, in partnership business, for employment purpose, loan taken to pay inheritance tax, these all loans are regarded as qualifying purpose loans and the interest expense on that loan is deductible from total income okay now that is clear that if the loan is from any of these five activities the interest of expense of that loan will be adjustable from the total income now some of you might have a question in your mind that sir if the loan is not from these five categories then what will happen like what i am saying is that if the loan is not a qualifying loan then what will happen? Is it still an allowed expense or it is not an allowed expense? So just listen to me carefully. If the loan is taken for a non-qualifying purpose. Now see these five are the qualifying purposes. Now if the loan is taken for any other purpose. Like if the loan is for a non-qualifying purpose. Then is it an allowed expense or not? Then it can become an allowed expense if it is related to certain income activity. Like let's take an example. You took a loan to purchase a property and then you let out that property. So there is an interest expense relating to property income activity. Then the interest expense is deductible but not from the total income. It is deductible from your property income. Or for example, you took a loan for normal trading activity, not for the plant and machinery. You took a loan for normal trading activity. Then also it is an allowed expense but from the trading PL, not from the total income. So just listen to me carefully while I write these rules. I will repeat everything again also. If a loan, if a loan is taken, if a loan is taken for a non-qualifying purpose, if a loan is taken for a non-qualifying purpose, but, but it is related but it is related to certain income activity like property income activity or trading income activity to certain income activity then its interest expense then its interest expense is deductible is deductible against that particular income only against that particular income only okay like for example you have taken a loan for property income activity now property income activity is not part of these five so then also the interest expense is deductible but that will be deductible from that particular income activity only like for example it will be deductible from property income only. but now there is one important point Sir, if I have taken a personal loan, like I charge my credit card for shopping, I charge my credit card for purchasing a burger, I took a car loan for my personal use, then is it an allowed expense? The answer is no. See the interest expense, if you are talking about the personal loans, the interest expense on personal loans is not an allowed expense. In a normal life, if you are doing any personal expense, that is not an allowed expense. Because personal expenses are your own. They are not an allowed expense from your tax purposes. Okay. If a loan is for personal purposes, like you take your own car loan or home loan, is for personal purposes, then, then its interest expense is, then its interest expense is not an allowed expense. And it is not an allowed expense from anywhere. Is not an allowed expense. 
because personal things are not an allowed expense you need to understand is not an allowed expense now let me repeat it again so that if anyone has any query it get clear and we'll do the practice questions also see if you are taking a loan and that loan is for qualifying purposes now there are five qualifying purposes loan taken to purchase plant and machinery for unincorporated business sole trader or partnership situations are called as unincorporated incorporated means a company i am talking about unincorporated if you are taking plant and machinery for your unincorporated business the interest expense will be deductible from total income loan taken to purchase plant and machinery for your employment loan taken to invest in close company loan taken to invest in cooperative societies or loan taken to pay inheritance tax if you have taken loan for any of these five purposes then the interest expense please make it clear don't claim allowed expense on the loan itself the interest expense on the loan the interest expense on the loan will be deductible from the total income don't deduct the loan amount the interest expense is deductible if the loan is a qualifying loan it will be deductible from the total income so what if if it is not a qualifying loan like if it is a loan for a non qualifying purpose like if it is not from these five then what will happen then just stop and think about it if it is a loan which is related to certain income activity like property income or if it is a loan relating to your trading activity if it is related to certain income activity then the allowed expense will be against that particular income only like from property income or trading income you will adjust it in the pnl of that particular income but if the loan is for a personal expense then it is not an allowed expense because then it is not related to any income activity you purchase a burger or you purchase shoes or cloth then it's not an allowed expense it's your personal expense so before moving towards the practice question if i repeat it one last time if the loan is taken for qualifying purpose then the interest expense on that loan is deductible against the total income now what are the qualifying purposes we have discussed that sir what is a close company when we'll study it in detail we'll be studying it in detail in the chapter of corporation tax and i will refer the topic again similarly cooperative societies which work for the benefit of the member if you have taken a loan to invest in that society or if you are taking a loan to pay inheritance tax so those loans are considered as qualifying loan and their interest expense are deductible from the total okay but if the loan is not from these five activities then it is not a qualifying loan in that case if it is related to certain income activity it will be deductible from that particular income only if the loan is for if the loan is for any personal purpose then please make it clear that personal expenses are not an allowed expense okay now let's look at a practice question in relation to it and believe me you will understand it clearly it's not difficult okay let's look at it practice question number 22 mr g has following data for the year employment income 18000 interest income from bank 22000 interest income from national saving certificate 14000 dividend income 12000 interest expense paid on loan to acquire plant for employment so it is a qualifying loan and when it is a qualifying loan its interest expense will be deductible from the total income we have to calculate the tax payable believe me it is very easy just listen to me carefully we are making a tax return and now we have three heads of income non saving saving and dividend okay just listen to me carefully you will get a revision of the previous class also and we'll also explore the qualifying loan interest expense okay now the first income is employment income 18000 the employment income goes in the head of non saving okay that is done then you have interest income from bank so it's a normal interest income and it will go in the head of saving income 22000 saving income okay then you have interest income from national saving certificate so it is an exempt source of income from national saving certificate okay 
So it's an exempt source, it will not appear anyway. Then you have dividend income. Okay, and your dividend income is 12,000. Okay, so you have employment income 18,000, interest income from bank, national saving certificate, it is exempt. So it do not appear in any head. And then you have dividend income. Last is interest expense paid, which is an expense, the qualifying loan and cost. You add up all of them to arrive at the value of total income. Okay, just look at it carefully. 18,000, 22,000 and 12,000. Done. Now you will claim qualifying loan interest expense. It is deductible from the total income. Now, what is the amount? Interest expense paid on loan to acquire plant for employment, 2900 Okay? You adjust that to arrive at the value of net income. Okay? As you just studied that qualifying loan interest is adjustable from the total income. Now, 18000 minus 2900 So, it's 15100 here it is 22,000 and here it is 12,000. Okay, so see just one line new adjustment. Interest expense paid on loan to acquire plant for employment, qualifying loan. You adjust qualifying loan interest expense from your total income. It is an expense. Now you will simply adjust the personal allowance to arrive at the value of taxable income. 12570. Now, as you adjust your personal allowance, you will get the value of taxable income. So now your taxable income will be, if you adjust 12570 from it, it's 2530. Here it is 22,000 and here it is 12,000. Okay. Now, if you add up all of them to determine your total taxable income, 22 plus 12, and then 2530, so it's 36530, which means you are a basic rate taxpayer. Okay, now this all is just routine, a quick revision of the previous class. Now let's charge tax on it. I want you all to listen to me carefully. 2530 is your taxable non saving income. It lies in the basic rate band. Your basic rate band is still 37,700. 2530 into 20%. So that gives you 506. Then you have saving income. Please listen to me carefully. 22,000. On first 5,000 pounds, if you remember, you have a saving income 0% back. And that happens when saving income lies in first 5,000 of the taxable income. This time you had non saving income of 2530. 2530 minus 5000. So just listen to me. 2470 at 0%? 0. See, first 5000 times of the taxable income. If that belongs to saving income, there will be 0% tax. Now, non saving income was 2530, so it consumed some space in the first 5000. Now, the remaining 2470 goes to saving income. Now, since you are a basic rate taxpayer, 1000 goes at 0%. So, that is 0. And the remaining saving income. See, I will repeat the things again also. So, just listen to me. 22,000 minus 2470 minus 1000. So, it's 18530. In the basic rate, it's 20%. It's 3706. Done. And then you have the dividend income. Now, what is the amount of your dividend income? It's 12,000. First 1,000 of the dividend is always taxed at 0%. See, this is just a repeat of the previous class. There is nothing new. Just there was one line new adjustment which was of qualifying loan interest expense. And the remaining 11,000 at basic rate which is 8.75%. Because since you are a basic rate taxpayer on total, so there is no need to check the banks. Okay? We have just checked the total taxable income that we are in basic rate band only. Now let's add up and arrive at the tax liability. 
I will repeat the things again also. So if anyone has any query, it will get clear. 506, 3706, and 962. So it's 5174. You adjust your text credit to arrive at the value of text payable. I think in this question there was no tax credit. There was no income in which there was withholding tax. Because one was employment, then interest income from bank, national saving certificate, and dividend. So there was no tax credit. So your tax payable is also 5174. Now let me repeat it again. See, the first step, as always, is to classify the incomes in the right way. Employment income goes in non saving, interest income from bank. National saving certificate is simply exempt. Dividend goes in the head of dividend. You add up all of them to arrive at the value of total income. You adjust your qualifying loan interest expense, which was simple one-line adjustment. You arrive at the net income. You adjust your personal allowance to arrive at the taxable income. You add up all of them to determine that you are a basic rate taxpayer. Your basic rate of bank goes till 37700 now, as you are a basic rate taxpayer, you will get 1,000 pounds saving income, 0% tax bar. 1,000 will be taxed at 0%. Now, non-saving income, 2530, basic rate, 20%. Then, saving income, 22,000. First 5,000, there was a space of 2470. That goes in 0%. 1,000 pound goes at 0%. This all is taught in the previous class. That if the saving income lies in first 5,000 pounds of the taxable income, then the amount which is lying in first 5,000 will be taxed at 0%. 2530 was consumed by non-saving and 2470 was given to saving income. Then 1,000 at 0% since you are a basic rate taxpayer, 2470, 1,000 and the remaining 18530 at 20%, it's 3706. Dividend, 1,000 at 0% and 11,000 at 8.75% since you are a basic rate taxpayer, you add up all of them to arrive at the tax liability. There was no advanced tax, which means there was no tax credit and simply the tax payable is 5,170. So if you look at this practice question, there was only one line new adjustment, qualifying loan interest expense, which is adjusted from the total income. So what is a qualifying loan interest expense? If you have taken a loan for qualifying purposes, then interest expense of that loan is deductible from the total income. This is called as qualifying loan interest expense. The qualifying purposes, plant and machinery for unincorporated business, plant and machinery for employment, the close company, the friends and family structure, cooperative societies, or loan to pay IHD. Okay. If the loan is not for a qualifying purpose, but it is related to certain income activity like property income or things like that, then it will be deductible from that particular income only, not from the total income. If it's a loan for personal purpose, then it's not an allowed expense. Then we apply this concept in this practice question, which I believe is not difficult one. Okay, if it's a qualifying loan, you just have to claim an allowed expense against the total income. The rest all is just a repeat of the previous classes. Let's look at one more practice question in relation to it. As we do the practice questions, the things will get more and more clear. Now let's look at practice question number 23. Okay, we'll be applying these rules in this practice question and then we'll move forward. Let's look at it. Okay, so let's look at practice question number 23. Mr. A has following data for the year. Trading income 19,000. Interest income from unlisted company loan notes is 25,000. Now, since it's unlisted company loan notes, so the amount is net, the question is silent, and the withholding tax will be 20%. Then there is interest income from individual saving account, which is 3,000, so it will be exempt source of income. Then there is dividend income of 16,000, and then there is interest expense paid on loan to invest in cooperatives. Now, when you talk about cooperatives, so it is a qualifying loan interest it will be deductible from your total income. Creating income 19,000, interest income from unlisted company loan notes, you need to gross it up from individual saving account, dividend and interest expense. So it's just a routine question like we did the previous ones. 
let's calculate the text payable so we are working out the tax return now non-saving income this is our first head then we have head of saving income and then we have the head of dividend income okay let's look at it now creating income creating income is 19,000 it goes in the head of non-saving okay then we have interest income from unlisted company and its amount is we need to gross it up from unlisted company it's 25,000 so 25,000 divided by 80 percent multiplied by 100 percent so that gives us 31250 it goes in the head of saving then you have individual saving in account interest income from individual saving account isa it is an exempt source of income so it will not go in any of the head and then we have dividend income and that is of 16000 so if you just look at it, it's just a routine question again. We have just classified the incomes in the relevant head. Trading income, interest income from unlisted company, 20% withhold. So you grossed it up to 80%. Individual saving accounts, so it's an exempt source of income, 3,000. And dividend income goes in the head of dividend. Now you have interest expense paid, which will be qualifying loan interest expense. So that we will adjust from the total income. Now, if we add up all of them, here the total income is 19,000, here it is 31250, and here it is 16,000. Now, we adjust our qualifying loan interest expense. Now, what is the qualifying loan interest expense? Can you tell me? It's 4,000 loan taken to invest in cooperatives. So, you adjust that 4,000 from here. And this gives you the value of the net income. So your net income will be 15,000, 31250, and here it will be 16,000. Now you will adjust your personal allowance. So your personal allowance will be 12570. So this gives you the taxable income. Now your taxable income will be 15,000 minus 12570. So it will be 2430. Here it is 31250 and here it is 16,000. Now if you add up all of your taxable incomes, so that gives you 49680 which indicates that you are a higher rate taxpayer. Okay, because you are exceeding your basic rate back. Now, if you are a higher rate taxpayer, the normal 0% tax band of saving income will be of 500 pounds. Let's charge tax on it. Believe me, it's just a routine question now. Non-saving income 2430. You are in your basic rate band currently. So 2430 into 20%. So that gives us 486. Then we have saving income. And that is 31250. Now the saving income which gets space in first 5000 of the taxable income. It will be taxed at 0%. So what is the difference? 5000 minus 2430. So it's 2570 being taxed at 0%, so that gives us 0. You are a higher rate taxpayer, so 500 will be taxed at 0%, so that also gives 0. And then you pick up the remaining saving income. 31250 minus 2570 minus 500. So it's 28180. You charge 20% on it. So that gives us 5, 6, 
increase it. Now you will pick up your dividend income and the amount of dividend income is 16,000. First 1,000 of the dividend is always taxed at 0%. So that gives us zero. Now let's look at the remaining space of the basic rate band because we had to shift to higher rate tax in this question since on the sum you are exceeding the basic rate band. So 37,700 minus 5,000 minus 500 minus 28,180 and minus 1,000. So it's 3,020, which will be taxed at 8.75%. 3,020 into 8.75%. So it's 264. And then the remaining dividend income, 16,000. Minus 1000 minus 3020, it's 11980, and in the higher rate band, it's 33.75%, which gives us 4043. You add up all of them to arrive at the value of tax liability. Okay, so 486. 5636, 264, and 4043. So that gives us 10429. You adjust your tax credit to arrive at the value of tax payable. Okay? So let's look at it. Now the advanced tax was deducted on the interest income from unlisted company, which we grossed up. 25,000 was grossed into 31250. So withholding tax was 6250. So you adjust that to arrive at your tax payable, which is 4179. So if I repeat it again, just look at it carefully. Trading income goes in non-saving interest income from unlisted company. You grossed it up. Divide by 80, multiply it by 100. Dividend goes in the head of dividend. You add up all of them to arrive at your total income. You are just qualifying loan interest to arrive at the net income. You are just your personal allowance to arrive at the taxable income. Now, this is the only new adjustment of our today's class when you adjust your qualifying loan interest from your total income to arrive at the value of net income. You add up all of the taxable incomes to determine that, okay, you are a higher rate taxpayer. Now, 2430 taxed at 20%. Just look at the remaining space of the 5,000 0 percent ban. That is 0%. You're a higher rate taxpayer, 500 at 0%. And then remaining saving income at 20%. Then you come on dividend. First 1,000 always at 0%. The remaining space in basic rate band, 8.75%. And then the higher rate band. So it's just a routine question. It's just a repeat telecast of what you did in the practice question, the previous one. So qualifying loan interest expense, one line adjustment from your total income, which you do to arrive at the value of net income. And then it is about using the tax bands properly. Saving income, there is a 0% band if it lies in first 5,000 of the taxable income. So whatever amount is lying, you apply 0% on it. If the non-saving income would be zero, then saving income would have got entire space in first 5,000 and then 5,000 entire would be taxed at 0%. Then higher rate taxpayer, so 500 at zero, and then the remaining saving income at 20%. So I hope that you are understanding it and things are going in a good direction. Now, let's look at one more practice question. And by now I expect that you people should be good enough that you can pause the recording and try it on your own also. Now let's look at practice question number 24. Mr. B has following data for the year. Employment income 12,000. Interest income from listed company. See, don't get confused. It is not unlisted company. If it would be unlisted company, then there would be withholding. It's a listed company, so there is no withholding. 18,000 is the total amount. There is no withholding because it's interest income from a listed company. Then income from REIT, 7,000. It's net. Withhold is 20% and it goes in non-saving income. Dividend income, 22,000. Interest expense paid on loan to invest in partnership business for purchase of plant and machinery, 4000 You have to calculate your tax payable. Okay? 
Now let's make a text return. I want you all to listen to me carefully. Now we have non-saving income. We have saving income. And the third one is dividend income. Okay, now, employment income. The amount of employment income is 12,000. It goes in the head of non-saving. Then you have interest income from listed company. There is no withhold on it because withhold only applies when you get interest from unlisted company. So it's 18,000. Then read, you need to gross it up. 7,000 divided by 80% multiplied by 100%. You need to gross it up. So it's 8,750. It goes in the head of non-saving. And then you have dividend income of 22,000. Okay. So employment goes in non-saving, interest income from listed, it's a normal interest income. Then in read you gross it up and dividend goes in the head of dividend. You add up all of them to arrive at the value of total income. 20750, 18,000 and 22,000. Okay. Interest expense paid on loan to invest in partnership business for purchase of plant and machinery 4,000. It's qualifying loan interest. So qualifying loan interest 4,000. You adjust that to arrive at the value of net income. So I believe that now it's just a routine question. So the net income is 16750, 18,000 and 22,000. You adjust your personal allowance, 12570 to arrive at the value of taxable income. Okay, now your taxable income will be 16750 minus 12570, it's 4180, 18,000 and 22,000. You add up all of them to look at whether you are a basic rate taxpayer, higher rate taxpayer or an additional rate taxpayer. So it's 44180, which means that on total you will become a higher rate taxpayer. So you will have normal 0% band of 500 pounds only in saving income. So this is just routine. This is the third practice question in this sequence and we are applying the same rules. Now let's apply tax on it. Now if you look at your non-saving income, it's 4180. You lie in the basic rate band. So 4180 into 20%. So that gives us 836, saving income 18,000, just look at the first 5,000 pounds of the taxable income, since non-saving is less than 5,000, so there is some space on which you can get 0% band, that only happens when non-saving is less than 5,000, so that is 820 into 0%, it's zero. Then normal 0% band of saving income, 500. That goes at 0%, that is zero. And then the remaining saving income, 18,000 minus 820 minus 500. So it's 16680, basic rate band 20%. So it's 3,000. 336 and then you have dividend of 22,000 so in dividend first 1,000 is always taxed at 0% so that gives us 0 now let's look at the basic rate band 
What is the remaining space in the basic rate band? Let's look at it. 37,700 minus 5,000 minus 500 minus 16680 minus 1,000. So it's 14520, 8.75%. So that gives us 1271 and then the remaining dividend income 22,000 minus 1,000 minus 14520, 6480, 33.75. So it's 2187. You add up all of them to arrive at your tax liability okay 836 3336 1271 and 2871 so it's 8314 you adjust your tax credit now what was your tax credit 7000 was grossed up to 8750 1750 was your credit so you arrive at the value of tax payable. Okay. 1750. So it's 6564. So if I just repeat it again, it's just a routine question again. Employment income goes in non-saving. Interest income was from listed company. So there was no withhold on it. Read, you gross it up, divide by 80, multiply it by 100, and dividend goes in the head of dividend. You add up all of them to arrive at the value of total income. You adjust qualifying loan interest expense to arrive at the net income. You adjust the allowances to arrive at the taxable income. You can add up all of the taxable incomes to determine that you are a higher rate taxpayer. So the 0% tax band of saving income will be of 500 pounds. Then... 4180 at 20%, remaining space in 5000 at 0%, then 500 pounds at 0%, and then the remaining saving income goes at 20%. Dividend, first 1000 at 0%, remaining space in the basic rate band, 8.75%, and the remaining dividend goes at 33.75%. You add, you arrive at tax liability, you adjust your advance tax to arrive at the payable. So it was again just a routine question. So qualifying loan interest expense. If you have taken a loan for a qualifying purpose, then interest expense of that loan is deductible from your total income. Interest expense of that loan is deductible from the total income. If it is not a qualifying purpose, then you can adjust against that particular income only. If it's a personal loan, then no allowed expense. So it's just a one-line adjustment from your total income and you arrive at the value of net income. So I believe that you have understood this concept of qualifying loan interest expense and then these three practice questions which we did. Now let's move forward and the second topic which we are discussing today, this is also a small topic and this relates to planning of personal allowance. It's an interesting topic just listen to me carefully and you will be able to understand it in a better manner. Now see, let's look at it. Planning of personal allowance. Now, see, our personal allowance is of 12,570 pounds. Just listen to me carefully. Now, how do we claim this personal allowance? We first adjust the non-saving income because it has the highest tax rate. No 0% bands in it. You obviously offset the income which has the highest tax rate so that you can get the maximum benefit of offsetting that income. Then we go for saving income because saving income has the same tax rates as non-saving but it has 0% bands in it. And then at last we offset the dividend income because it has the lowest tax rates. Because it has the lowest tax rates. Now, the normal sequence is non-saving, saving and dividend. But there is one situation when we have to use our mind and do some planning. Now let's look at that situation. But first I will write down the normal claim. Personal allowance. Personal allowance. 
is relieved or is claimed against non-saving income first against non-saving income first as it has highest tax rates okay the non-saving income has the highest tax rates so we claim personal allowance against non-saving income first but if non-saving income is insufficient like if you don't have sufficient non-saving income, like we did questions in which we had non-saving income of 5,000 or 6,000, then we move forward. But if non-saving income is insufficient to relieve personal allowance, then, then personal allowance is relieved PA means personal allowance, is relieved against saving income. Against saving income as it has second highest tax rates. After non-saving income, it has the second highest tax rates. Okay? And then if the saving income is also insufficient, then personal allowance is relieved against dividend income at last because you all know that dividend income has the lowest tax rates like 8.75 33.75 and 39.35 whereas non-saving and saving have 20 40 and 45 is relieved against dividend income at last as first as dividend income has has lowest tax rate. Let me repeat it again. See, you adjust your non-saving income first. Why? Because it has the highest tax rates. If your non-saving income is insufficient, then you go for saving income, reason being that it has the second highest tax rates. You offset the dividend income at last. Why? Because dividend income has the lowest tax rates. Now, this is what we know already. That you offset non-saving first because it has the highest tax rate. Then saving income and then dividend income. So, what is the planning point which you are aiming to reach? Now, think about it. However, in certain situations, what we will do is that from non-saving income, we will hit saving partially or zero. And we'll go towards dividend income. Now, when this will be done? This is done when some of the saving income is covered through 0% tax ban. Listen to me carefully. For example, if you have a saving income of 6,000 and your non-saving taxable has fallen to zero. Just listen to me. Your non-saving taxable has fallen to zero and your saving income is 6,000. Then this 6,000 is already covered in 0% tax ban. The first 5,000 of the taxable and then 1,000 if you are a basic rate taxpayer. Then claiming personal allowance against saving income is not viable because that is already covered in 0% tax bar. Just think about it. If something is already zero, when you'll apply 0% tax on it, the answer is zero. Why are you wasting your personal allowance against it? Listen to me. However, however, if saving income However, if saving income is covered in 0% tax band, in 0% tax band, then personal allowance may not be used, may not be used or may not be claimed against saving income completely. When we'll do the practice question, believe me, it will get there against saving income completely and it will be shifted towards dividend income. Just listen to me carefully. Towards dividend income. Now one important thing which you need to understand. Listen to me. Partial claim is allowed. Partial claim against income heads is allowed. 
Now, what do you mean by this? For example, if you have saving income of 8,000, you may decide to offset 2,000 only and leave 6,000 because that may be covered under the 0% tax bar. So if saving income is covered in 0% tax bar, then personal loss may not be claimed against saving income completely and it will be shifted towards dividend income. Why? Because it is not advisable to kill something which is already at 0% tax bank. Sir, if the dividend is also covered in 0% tax bank, then obviously you have to claim the personal loss anywhere because it cannot be carried forward. Okay? So you can do partial claims and do planning. But what you need to understand is that personal allowance cannot be carried forward to next year. So whatever you want to do, you have to do it in the current year only. Cannot be carried forward. Whatever you want to do, you have to do it in the current year. There is no carry forward or carry back. Just listen to me carefully. When we'll do the practice question, it will get crystal clear. See, when we talk about personal allowance, we first offset the non saving because non-saving income head has the highest tax rate. Once done with the non-saving, then we go for the saving income. Because its tax rates are second highest. Once done with saving, then we go for dividend. So non-saving, saving and dividend. But there can be a situation. When we first did non-saving, we still have the allowance remaining. Then we go for saving. But in saving, we don't use the allowance completely and we go for the dividend. This happens when your saving income is already getting covered in the 0% tax bar, use your mind. If certain amount is already getting covered in 0% tax ban, why will you hit allowance there and waste your allowance? Because even if you don't use the allowance, the answer will be 0. Because it's 0% tax ban. However, if saving income is covered in 0% tax ban, then personal allowance may not be claimed against saving income completely and it will be shifted towards dividend income. Partial claim against income head is allowed like you can do, like you claim 500 against saving income, you claim 1000 or even if you don't want to claim, you can do that also and you can go towards dividend income. But it cannot be carried forward. Whatever you want to do, you have to do in the current year only. Now what we have studied, when we will apply it in the practice question, believe me, it will get crystal clear. But for that, you need to look at the practice question first. Okay, now let's look at the practice question in relation to it where we'll be doing this plan. Okay, let's look at it. Mr. K has following incomes for the year. Employment income 6,000. Interest from the bank loan 7,500. Dividend income 35,000. You have to calculate the tax payable. Just listen to me carefully. You will be able to understand it clearly. Okay, it's just a basic question. We are making a tax return. And we have three heads, non-saving, saving, and dividend. Please listen to me carefully. Now, you have employment income of 6,000. So employment income goes in the head of non-saving. Then you have interest income. Your interest income is 7,500. It goes in the head of saving. And then you have dividend income. And that is 35,000. Okay. The incomes are classified in the relevant heads. There is no qualifying loan interest expense. Okay. So we have the total income. 6,000. 7500 and 35000 when there is no qualifying loan interest expense so total income and net income will be same now you will adjust your personal allowance there is no qualifying loan interest expense in the question and that will give you the taxable income just listen to me carefully believe me the things will be easier now we first offset the allowance against the non saving and there is no debate on it because non-saving income has the highest tax rates. There is no 0% band in it. Then we go for saving and then we go for dividend. But if you look at the saving income, see the amount is 7500. So the major portion will be covered through the allowance. So now let's look at it carefully. 
what I am doing is, I am making a column of total so that you can have a clear illustration. Okay? Just look at it to understand it. You made it when you can identify through the question that saving income is majorly getting covered in the allowance. Your total income was 6,000 plus 7,500 plus 35,000. So that is 48,500. Now when you adjust the allowance against it, 12570, just listen to me. Your taxable income will fall to 35930. Just listen to me. This means that on total you will be a basic rate taxpayer. Now when you will be a basic rate taxpayer in saving income, you will get a 0% tax band of 1000 since you are a basic rate taxpayer. And your non-saving income has also fallen to zero. So you will get one more 0% tax band of 5000. So 1000 plus 5000. 6000 will already be taxed at 0%. 6000 will already be taxed at 0%. So what I am doing is that I will only claim personal allowance of 1500 here. 7500 and difference of 6000, I will claim 1500 here. And the remaining allowance will be shifted to dividend income. 12570, 6000 used in non saving, 1500 used in saving. Now the remaining allowance is 5070. There is nothing left after dividend. Last is dividend. So you will claim 5070 here. So that gives you your taxable dividend income of how much? 29930. So please repeat it again. See, we first adjust our personal allowance against the non-saving income. Because the non-saving income has the highest tax rates. And there is no debate in it. There is no argument in it. Because in non-saving, there is no 0% tax ban. You first offset the non-saving, there is no planning in it. Now move forward towards the saving. But when I'm looking at the saving income, it's 7,500. And I can see that the non-saving has fallen to zero. So I can estimate that, okay, 5,000 will be at 0%. Let's look at the other 0% band also. So I made a column of total and I looked at my estimated total taxable income. So that shows me basic rate of tax pay. So it will be 1,000 more at the 0%. So 6,000 will be at 0% tax band irrespective of how I use the allowance. So why to kill this 6,000 and it is already at 0%? So I will offset the allowance of 1,500 only here and the remaining allowance will be shifted to dividend. Now let's charge tax on it. Just look at it carefully. Your non-saving income is 0. So obviously on 0, 20% will also be 0. It is not necessary to show this line. Then saving income. See, you intentionally left 6,000 here. 5,000 at 0%. Reason being that there was no non-saving in the question. And since you are a basic rate taxpayer, 1,000 more at 0%. So that is also 0. Now comes the dividend. 29930. First 1,000 always at 0. And then the remaining dividend, which is 28930. Since you are a basic rate taxpayer, so it is 8.75. So that is 2531. If I add up all of them, I will arrive at the tax liability. 2531. There is no advanced tax in the question. So this tax liability will become the payable also. So if you look at this question, there was a good planning situation. You first offset your allowance against the non-saving income. Then you go for the saving. You started to use up your mind. When you saw that, okay, the saving income is just 7,500. It will be covered in the 0% tax band. The reason being that the non-saving is falling to zero. So there will be 5,000 at 0%. Let's make a column of total and look at the total taxable income. He's a basic rate taxpayer at total. So 1,000 more will be at 0%. So let's leave 6,000 here and only claim 1,500. 
these partial claims are permitted. See, I wrote it. Partial claim against income head is allowed. But whatever you want to do, you have to do in the current year because it cannot be carried forward. Then you claim the remaining allowance against the dividend. You get the taxable incomes and then you charge the tax. So planning of personal. You first offset your personal allowance against the non-saving because it has the highest tax rate. After non-saving, it's saving and then it's dividend. But if you look at the question, you first offset the non-saving. Then you look at the saving, you say, apparently it will be covered in the 0% tax bank. So let's do some partial claim and make the best of our personal allowance. And then we go for remaining allowance in the dividend income. Is it clear? Now let's do two more practice questions in relation to it. As we do more and more practice questions, believe me, the things will get clear. Now let's look at this practice question number 26. I want you all to listen to me carefully while we do this practice question. Okay, so Mr. B has following incomes for the year. Trading income of 7,500, interest from bank loan 8,000, and dividend income from 15,000. We have to calculate the tax payable. So again, it is one of the routine questions. Just you have to look at the tax planning in relation to personal allowance. Let's look at it. We will be making the tax return. And there will be three heads of income as usual. Non-saving. Saving. And dividend. Okay. There are three heads of income. Now. Within non-saving income, you have trading income. And trading income is 7,500 that goes in non-saving. Then you have interest income from bank loan. And that interest income is 8,000 that goes in saving income. And then finally you have dividend income and that is 15,000. Dividend goes in the head of dividend income. Done? You add up all of the incomes to arrive at the value of the total income. Okay. Now there is no qualifying loan interest expense. So you will add just personal allowance from your total income. 7,500, 8,000 and 15,000. You will adjust your personal allowance from here. Now non-saving income is offset at the first priority and there is no debate on it. But once done with non-saving, then you move towards saving income and dividend income. But now again, you can see here, yet that your saving income will be majorly covered through the 0% tax bank. See, the non-saving has fallen to zero. So in saving income, there will be 0% tax band of 5,000 and normal 0% tax band also. So now what we'll be doing is that we will add one column of total. 7,500 plus 8,000 plus 15,000. So this is 30,500. Just listen to me carefully. Now, if I adjust personal allowance from the total, just to decide that which 0% tax ban will be available. So 17930 will be my total taxable income, which indicates that I will be a basic rate taxpayer. Now, if I am a basic rate taxpayer, just use your mind. This means that in saving income, 5,000 is the 0% tax ban as non-saving income is zero. And there will be 1,000 more for the 0% tax ban. So 6,000 of the saving income will be taxed at 0%. Now, if 6,000 will be taxed at 0%, there is no point of offsetting this 6,000. So what I will do is that I will only claim personal allowance of 2,000 here, which is the difference of 8,000 and 6,000. I will only claim 2,000 here. So 1, 2, 5, 7, 0 is your allowance. 7,500 against non-saving and 2,000 against saving. So against dividend income, you will claim 3,070. Because if you offset the saving income completely, you will be wasting your allowance. Because 6,000 will already be taxed at 0%.
Now 15,000 minus 3070, it's 11930 in your dividend income. Now let's charge tax on it. Your non-saving income is zero. If you charge 20% tax on zero, obviously that will give you zero. Then you have saving income of 6,000. Since non-saving has fallen to zero, so in saving income, first 5,000 will be taxed at zero percent. That gives you zero. And you will be a basic rate taxpayer on total. So 1,000 will also be taxed at zero percent. So that also gives you zero. And then you have dividend of double one nine three zero. First 1,000 of dividend is always taxed at zero percent. So that is zero. And then the remaining dividend income 10930, you charge 8.75% on it. So that gives us 956. You add up everything to arrive at your tax liability since there is no advanced tax. So tax liability and payable will be the same. So if I repeat it again, see only one simple step which I'm trying to teach in this question is that first you offset your allowance against the non-saving income and there is no debate on it. But once done with the non-saving, then you go for the saving income. But in saving income, you will not offset your personal allowance completely if you can see that your saving income will be covered in 0% tax bar. Since non-saving is falling to zero, so 5,000 will be at 0% tax bar. You made the column of total, you looked at your taxable income, you found that you are a basic rate taxpayer, so 1,000 more will be at 0% tax. So 6,000 balance allowance of 2,000 will be claimed here. And then the remaining allowance against the dividend income, 11930, you charge your taxes, that's a simple process. So we always offset our personal allowance against non-saving, then we go for saving, and then we go for dividend. But in saving income, we can go for a partial claim and shift towards dividend income. If we can find that, okay, the amount of the saving income will be covered through the 0% tax bar. Because there is no benefit of offsetting something which is already covered at 0% tax. Now, let's look at last practice question in relation to it. Okay, you can pause the recording and try it on your own also. Mr. K has following incomes for the year. Employment income 6,500, interest from bank loan 9,000, and dividend income 13,000. We have to calculate the tax payable. Let's make the tax return. Okay. Now there will be three heads non saving, saving, and dividend. Let's look at it non saving, saving, and dividend. These are the three heads of the income which we have to make. Now let's classify the income. Employment income goes in non-saving. 6,500. Then we have bank loan interest. Interest income from bank loan, it goes in saving. And then you have dividend income of 13,000. That goes in the head of dividend. So you simply classify the incomes in the relevant head. You arrive at the value of the total income. Okay. Now there is no qualifying loan interest expense. So this total income will be considered as the net income also. And you will adjust your personal allowance. Now let's adjust the personal allowance. I want you all to listen to me carefully. Now, 6,500 from non-saving, no debate on it. Now, for the remaining personal allowance, we go for saving and then we go for dividend. But in saving income, we can see that the major portion of the income will be covered through 0% tax bar. So, we need to do some planning in relation to it. Okay, let's make the column of total. Okay. Now your total of the total income, 6,500, 9,000 and 13,000, this was 28,500. 
when you adjust your allowance of 12570 your taxable income on total will be 15930 this clearly indicates that you are a basic rate taxpayer now if you are a basic rate taxpayer and your non saving income has also fallen to zero 5000 plus 1000 6000 will be taxed at 0% back so you will not offset the entire 9000 rather what you will do is that you will only claim allowance of 3000 here and you will leave 6000 reason being that it is already covered at 0% tax back 12570 minus 6000 minus 3000 your remaining allowance of 3570 will be adjusted against the dividend income and that gives us 9430. Okay, let's charge tax on it. Your non saving income is zero. So even if you charge tax on zero, that will give you a zero answer. Then you have saving income that is 6000 since non saving has fallen to zero. So first 5000 at zero percent in the saving, it's zero. And the remaining saving income of 1000 also at 0%. So that also gives you the zero. Now, finally, the dividend 9430. First 1000 at 0% in the dividend income, it's always. And then the remaining dividend of 8430 will be taxed at 8.75%. Okay, so that gives us 738 and that is your tax liability since there was no credit, so liability and the payable amount will be the same. So if you look at it, we clearly illustrated the concept of planning of personal loans that we first offset the non-saving and there is no doubt on it because non-saving income has the highest tax rates. Once done with it, then we go for the saving. Okay, but in the saving, if there is some 0% tax ban getting involved, we skip that amount and then we go for the dividend. So if you look at it, in our today's class, we started our discussion with qualifying loan interest expense. That if the loan is for a qualifying purpose, then interest expense is adjustable against the total income. Okay, loan taken to purchase plant and machinery for unincorporated business, for employment purpose, to invest in closed company, to invest in cooperative societies, or to pay inheritance tax. We offset the interest expense against the total income if it's a qualifying loan interest expense. And then we looked at planning of personal allowance. We first offset the non-saving, then saving, and then dividend. But if there is 0% tax ban getting involved and that is covering the certain portion of saving income, we will not be offsetting that amount. The reason being is that you just need to think logically that if something is already being taxed at 0% tax ban, there is no need to offset it. Now, in the basic income tax calculation chapter, if I just make the list of the topics which we have covered, because the next class will be the last class on this topic. In the basic income tax calculation chapter, if you look at it, income tax calculation. We looked at the basic format of the tax return. Okay, that how we divide the incomes in three heads. Format of tax return. We looked at personal allowance, that it's 12570. We looked at the tax year, that it is from 6th April to 5th April. We looked at the head of non saving income, that what are the tax rates of non saving income head. 20, 40, and 45. We looked at the topic of real estate investment trust, that it's a mutual fund which raises funds from the public and then invest in the real estate. We discussed the head of dividend income, the tax rates of dividend income. We discussed the head of trust income. Then we discussed head of interest income, which is the saving income. Okay, the saving income head. And then in the today's class, 
you looked at two issues which were qualifying loan interest expense and then we looked at planning of personal allowance. So we are discussing each of the topic and we are doing the relevant practice questions so that the concepts get clear. Okay. Now in the next class, we'll be looking at the last issue. And that last issue is qualifying donations. Now this is the topic of our next class, which we'll be discussing in the next class qualifying donations and once done with this our chapter will be completed we started with the format of the tax return personal allowance tax year non-saving income issues of the read then dividend income trust issues discretionary trust iip saving income issues qualifying loan interest planning of personal allowance and then in the next class our topic will be qualifying donations okay so i hope that you are understanding the issues and you are able to understand my approach that how i am dealing with the issues we pick up every concept and then we do the relevant practice questions so that you get clarity on the concept in the next class we will be studying the concept of qualifying donations and we'll be doing the relevant practice questions then our chapter will be completed then i'll be giving you few homework questions which you have to do on your own and send me for marking and feedback. Okay? Thank you, everyone.